So I want to pick up from where I left off, and I have a very, a very, uh, I have my own way of studying this material. And as soon as I learn something new, I have a way of quizzing myself. And this is what I'm going to do to you now. What we have are five points on this graph of action potential. We have five points that correlate to the way processes take place, to these processes. And you need to figure out which, which of these processes go to what number or what order are these happening in. So pause the video now and see if you can work on it. Perfect. So let's get started and work on figuring this out. Well, we need for the first, the first initial, initial stop, let's consider um, the, most, the, most, um, the most logical thing to say would be the first thing that I need for an action potential is some sort of stimulation to kickstart the process. And now just by looking at the graph, I know that I'm going to have an increase and the membrane potential. So I'm going to have an increase of positive charges going in. So if I have an increase in positive charges going in, what channel is open? What channel is going to enable charges to go in? Well, what charges are outside? What, what more substance, or if it, this membrane, what is a great, great concentration of positive charges outside? Sodiums. So the channel that must be open right now to enable all of this uh, positive change has to be the sodium channels have to open. And at this point, I can see that the channels, uh, the, the, the difference that occurred here, the, the very dramatic increase was suddenly come to a stop. So I have, uh, I probably have the next step of the sodium channel. I know it isn't closed. I know that the sodium channel doesn't go from open to closed. It has to go to inactive. So what I'm looking for as sodium channels are inactivated. And after that, I have a rapid depolarization, a rapid negative, negative uh, drop in my membrane potential. And basically, I know that this only happens when positive charges are rapidly going out. And what species of ions is going out rapidly when its channels open? We're talking about potassium, of course. We're talking about potassium, of course. So basically, this was somewhat of a trick question because this event simultaneously represents the inactivation of the sodium channels and the delayed opening of the potassium channels. So I'll write three here as well, three here as well. And what happens at this point here? Point number four, what happens at this point? Well, we know that as long as the sodium channels are going to be open, I'm going to be experiencing a drop, a drop all the way. So if suddenly my drop stops, if suddenly my drop stops, that means that the channels that let all the potassium out, the channels that let all the potassium out, thus making my membrane more negative, must be closed by now. So this is basically number four, I would say, is the closing, the closing of potassium channels. Number five would have to be the, uh, let's just say, resuming of membrane, of membrane potential. And what we have left to discuss is when does this occur? When does this occur? So you know what? We are going to discuss right now when exactly do the different channels open on this graph. And this is, this is also represented in the lecture slides, but I like to do it to do it here because I don't have a lot of other, a lot of other words to filter and, and write through. So I'm just, going to, I'm just going to do this now. And before I do so, I wanna, I wanna erase all of, these, all of these notations. Just keep it clean, keep it, keep it neat. Very good. So what I, what I know really, or maybe I don't, and I need to kind of revise it, is that as soon as I have some sort of stimulation, you need to understand that both my potassium and my sodium and my sodium channel, both of them open, both of them open. It's only that this, potass uh, that this potassium channel is going to take a long while to, to get into effect. So if I need, let's just say I'm taking my green color for, for uh, sodium, and I'm saying that at this point, sodium, channel, sodium, <laughs> sodium channels open. They open. Sodium channels are open. And at this point, they're inactivated. 
And then after a while, after a while, they're going to close right around here. Think of sodium as a sprint. It sprints for short distances. So it's, I'll just write sprints. And potassium is more the marathon, is more the marathon type. More the marathon type. It starts here as well, but it's, it's taking its time. It's saying, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm maybe not going really, really fast, but I'm going to last longer. So it's going to stay open. And right around at this point, right around at this point, we said two things occur. First of all, the sodium channels are inactivated, and the potassium channels are at their peak. They're at their peak. So what's going to happen now? They're at their peak, which means that the uh, potential, the membrane potential is going to drop, and they're going to stay open. They're going to stay open. And right around here, we said that the, the cell stops being, or it stops dropping. It stops dropping. So slowly this is going to close. And if you look in the, uh, in the lecture slide, you will see a graph that looks something like this. And what this means really is that these sodium channels open really drastically and they close really quickly, whereas the potassium channels take a while to open, but they're, they're open for longer. This is, basically, this is basically what it means. Now, what's important to understand, and, and if this was asked quite, quite often in exams, is let's just say I keep, I'm just going to erase this here, I keep my uh, sodium channel open. I don't inactivate it at all. I don't inactivate it at all. I keep it open. Where, where is the maximum that this, this peak is going to get? Where is the maximum that this peak is going to get? And I'm going to give you a hint. I'm going to give you a hint. Sodium, uh, we use the Nernst equation, the Nernst equation to calculate the sodiums, sodiums, equilibrium, equilibriums, potential. So I want you to think about it and pause the video now. And I want you to think about where is it going to stop? Is it going to stop or is it going to keep going up indefinitely? Is it going to keep on until I inactivate the channels? So pause it now if you want to think about it. Okay, so uh, if we take a look at the hint I gave you, there is some sort of level here, some sort of level here that if we get to, sodium is not going to have a net flux in or out. And if you are not sure what I mean, you can review the video. But basically, let's just say that for potassium, the, for potassium, the equilibrium, or you know what, let's just stick to sodium. For sodium, the equilibrium potential calculated by the Nernst equation is plus 60. Okay? And this means that if the membrane is at plus 50, potassium is going to keep coming in because it's going to want to make this more positive. It's going to want to get to plus 60. That's where it's happy. And if this is at plus 60, potassium is already happy. It's not going to move in anymore. It's going to stop. It's going to say, okay, I've reached plus 60. Guys, you can stop the party and we're just going to relax. And if sodium stops coming in, that means that the depolarization, that the, uh, that the, that the positive influx into the membrane potential is going to stop. So you can imagine that if plus 60 is the top limit, the top limit of the sodium, because this is its equilibrium potential, my peak is not going to be higher than this. My peak is not going to be higher than this. And you can imagine that for potassium, we have a similar instance in which potassium has a negative 89 millivolts equilibrium potential for potassium. And that means that if I open potassium channels all the way, I can't get below negative 89. Negative 89 is around here, let's say, right around here. And this effectively is a very interesting way of keeping, keeping the membrane potential between a given range so that it wouldn't go crazy. And just so you know, I have just given you an answer to a question that you very may well have either in your final or your second self-control. So let me repeat that question and also repeat the answer. The question is something along the lines of draw the action potential curve, which is this curve, and you need to give a specific value. You need to give some sort of value here just around uh, the ballpark, and you need to label the axis time and membrane potential in, uh, in millivolts. And then the question was, 
is there a theoretical top limit to the depolarization? Just a reminder, this is the de depolarization and this is the repolarization. Is there a theoretical limit to the depolarization of the membrane potential? And if so, why and what is it? So the answer is yes, there is a theoretical limit and that theoretical limit is the resting or the rather the equilibrium, I'm mixing it up, the equilibrium potential of the sodium ion is going to be my theoretical limit because when I reach this point, sodium is not going to come in anymore and it's not going to get my inside of the cell more positive. It's not going to make it shoot up anymore. It's going to stop. And accordingly, I'm going to have a theoretical minimum, which is potassium's equilibrium potential. And if I reach it, potassium is not going to get out of the cell and it's not going to make it more negative. And basically, it's really good to know uh, at least the minus 89 for potassium. Just to be able to draw the graph, the plus 60 for sodium, and let's just say a basic minus 70 for a resting membrane potential. You really need to know to draw this just in case they ask, and you can't really draw if you don't really know basically what, what type of values to use. Very good. So hopefully this made a little bit of sense. And all we have really left to discuss is just a little bit more information about uh, different labels inside this graph. And also, uh, yeah, I think uh, I'm going to just throw some more questions your way in the next video as well. So we'll see you on the next video.